finally, it is the day you have all been waiting for. The time has come. It is Spyro 3, Year of the Dragon, Crystal Fish's Let's Play. I'm sure you're all happy about this, all, all, all uh, fans of the game, uh, all fans of me, you know, I'm sure you're happy to be doing this. Let's start a new game, let's override it, and we're going to select the same icon. Yeah, maybe you can ascertain what happened there. to capture the eggs, your highness. Every last one. Excellent. Maybe you will amount to something after all. Now, go guard the tunnels. Stop anyone from coming through. out on the other side of the dragon worlds. We found some of the eggs, but they were too heavy to carry back. The other side of the world? The forgotten worlds. Spyro, you'll have to go. Nobody else can fit down the holes. Yeah, come on, let's go! Find the eggs and bring them back, Spyro. You're our only chance. You got it. And here we are. This is the gameplay. Finally, we've uh, we've made it. We've uh, finished the cutscenes. We're ready to play. But uh, unfortunately, there's quite a lot more cuts. Uh, quite a lot more cutscenes in this part, which isn't a bad thing, I guess. I shouldn't be saying unfortunately, but more just we've got to kind of lay the groundwork of the storyline and all that. Um, you know, you have to do that. It's uh, it's Spyro. It's a video game. It's a video game convention. Here we are in the first level, which is, of course, everyone remembers it. It is. Sunrise Spring Home. I almost forgot it there just then. That's why I tried to like give it a grand introduction so I could actually remember what it was. Here's our first little dragon egg. Isabel. Isabel. I like it. I like it. She was a bitch in the show Neighbours. Um, I'm sure you British people know all about Neighbours and how it's an Australian show or whatever. All right, here we go. Now also, here we go. We got the first little thing with Bianca. Here we go. So, you're the one in charge of rescuing the eggs, huh? Yes. <laughs> How sad. Look here, dragon. If you know what's good for you, you'll turn around and crawl back up that hole you came through. Those eggs belong to us now, and I've hidden them in places you'll never find in a thousand years. Besides, even if you could find an egg, our expertly trained armies will dispose of you and take it back. Do I make myself clear? If I find you here again, I am going to be very angry. And you won't like me when I'm angry. Mm, yeah, yeah, I'm not not convinced that she would be able to do anything. She's some kind of bunny rabbit thing. That's Bianca, voiced by, I'm pretty sure, Pamela Hayden, um, who voices a lot of characters on The Simpsons. Now, anyway, I was also talking about, uh, like, I was just thinking to myself, I was thinking, hmm, Hunter's voice sounds different. I think Zoe's is. She's voiced by Sandy Cheeks' as a voice actor, uh, Carolyn Lawrence. But I think that's the name there, yeah, Caroline, Caroline. But yeah, I'm pretty sure this guy is voiced by Tom Kenny now, Hunter. Let's have a listen. Yo, Spyro, 
I just found one of those portal thingamajigs that leads to a different world. But you'll have to glide to get across. Oh, the thank Press fuck. Press the X button to jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank shit. I, I thought for a second that it was a different voice actor. And I was like, no, no, no. I, I can't believe I didn't remember. I just, I, for some reason, I don't, I don't know, mental blank. But, um, and there's, we got, we, unfortunately, we do have a different voice actor here. I might as well, uh, talk to, well, not, I don't know if it's unfortunate. Uh, you'll see. Speak, we'll just let him speak for himself. Spyro! My, my, how funny to see you here. Why, I haven't seen you since we defeated Ripto in Avalar. <laughs> well, my business went into a slump after you left, so I came here and struck up a nice deal with the local sorcerers. Lovely woman she is. Seems to be very fond of dragons, too. Foreshadowing, perhaps? The sorceress has asked me to guard Sheila the kangaroo. I suppose if you had a bit more money, I'd be willing to let her escape. Then you could keep her for a pet or something. Yes, because uh, in Australia, we keep uh, kangaroos in our garages. That's what we do. Uh, just in case you had, you didn't know, that's, that's obviously what we do. Um, now look, here's another little portal here. Cloud Spires. I saw something shiny in that cave over there. Let's go check it out. You can... You can get there by hovering. Hovering, yes, we all know how to hover. This is just like that tutorial in Spyro 2, you know, where you get a uh, an orb after. Look, it's it's simple. Look. Oh, I almost forgot. I found this egg. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Now, you said you saw something shiny in the cave. Where? Where? I don't see anything shiny other than Coltrane just being uh, exploded right there. That doesn't make any sense. So, uh, yeah, plot hole. Not really. I'm just kidding. Now, um, look, we got this little six section here where we're introduced to a power up this system is a again. This Superfly power up, Spyro. Whenever you walk through any power up that looks like this one, it will allow you to fly for a while. That's right, Sandy. That is right. Now, look, I, w I won't use it yet, but uh, I'll just get these first. What we'll do is get a majority of them, and then, yeah, because you need to have enough time to get to the end. Um, all right, ready? Actually, no, you can pretty much get them all. Look, you go down here, do that, do this. And there's actually a little glitch you can do if you get high enough where you can actually, like, go out of bounds and then do a swimming in the air glitch, everyone. Do you guys remember the swimming in the air glitches? Um, maybe not, maybe, I don't, I don't really do them very often in the Spyro 2 LP, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay, so ready you go up to the top here. And Amy, I bet, I bet it's Amy. Yes, Amy. Very nice blue, little, uh, there's, there's not, like, a massive amount of, um, variation in the dragons. I mean, like, not, it's not terrible, it's definitely not terrible, it's not, like, huge. There are ones that do look, you know, similar, but, you know, we're not gonna complain there, who really gives a shit. Um, now, what we got, we got some more portals, we got some more people here. There's so many people we can talk to, that's the thing, that's what's good about it. Um, you know, a lot of interactivity, you know, a lot of, everything's very interactive, uh, Spyro. Um, sheep, of course, they return. And you can flame them, you know, you can just destroy them, you know, you can end their life for no reason, you know, because we're just evil, evil creatures. Alright, now, we've also got a little rock here. You may be thinking, what's that rock doing? Do I remember Spyro 2? Oh, well, yes, I do. And, yeah, and I, I do remember, I don't remember screwing up in Spyro 2, so. There's Liam, everyone's favourite. You know, everyone knows a guy named Liam, and he's always a legend. You know, I'm sure that I know a Liam. And he happens to be one of the greatest human beings to have ever existed. So, you know, not being hyperbolic at all. I see an egg at the bottom of this lake. I would, I would go get it, I but mean. I don't want to get my fur all wet. Maybe you could get it. You can dive underwater by pressing the square button when you're on the surface, and charge underwater by holding down the square button. So, again, we are going to be reintroduced to the greatest swimming mechanic in video game history, and uh, that, unlike, uh, just like the Liam thing, was not hyperbolic. Uh, it, it, it truly is probably the best swimming you ever see. Now, this is normal swimming, right? If you hold down X, right? That's the normal swimming, and it's, it's good. You know, it's diverse, you get to go around, it's slow, it looks natural for the dragon, you know, like it looks, it looks cool, it looks, it looks right, you know, it looks fine, and you know, if this was as fast you go swimming, I wouldn't be upset. You know, it would slow the game down a bit. Here's Bruce. Bruce. All right. Now, that's five out of five, but then if we press square, we get the charge. And that's where the 
the just just versatility and speed and power and legendary status of uh, this this, this uh, ability of this swimming really you know it comes on hinge you, you're like holy crap this is truly amazing now if we go up here a little bit over here got some more stuff on how many there's 400 gems in each home world I'm pretty sure that stays the same throughout uh, the, the, the game uh, for each home world not for each level there are like some levels I think they have like 800 gems which are the highest amount you know Spyro 2 never really got above like 400 I'm pretty sure Spyro 3 uh, changes that uh, a fair bit now I'm just thinking I'm probably missing quite a few aren't I um, right, what do we got over here over here we need yep we need 14 to get into the level by the way um, right, anything here oh there's some stuff over here look you see a sign it's uh, Sparks Special star task for Sparks, maybe back here later. Now, speaking of the home world in general, um, you'll notice that it's it's called it's called Sunrise Spring Home. Now, uh, you, you see spring, we had all in Spire 2 we had autumn plains, we had win, you know winter tundra, we had summer forest. Now, sunrise spring, or at least the word spring, suggests that there was, you know, this this is a remaining home world from Spyro. Too. Now we actually kind of changed that theory around to say if there was, you know, Spyro, uh, Spyro three, uh, two had four worlds. This obviously wouldn't be the world, but something based on this concept, you know, a spring home world would be. And I would, I personally, I would love to see it even more than this level. Like with this level, it's it's cool, but imagine like a Spyro two themed, you know, one with those really cool, cordy, like really nice, you know, ambient music. So could you imagine it with with? Uh, with it with an autumn with it with a spring world it would be pretty fantastic now let's go talk to money bags i'm getting paid a fortune to keep sheila the kangaroo locked up <laughs> the pesky animal must have been causing a lot of trouble for that poor sorceress i suppose i could accidentally let the kangaroo escape if you were to pay me say a small fee you're a fucking criminal money bags you're a criminal Ah, Spyro, I love your sweet naivete. Your kind-hearted nature might be your downfall someday, but for the time being, it's making me rich. <laughs> Alright, watch this. We had a good cutscene now. Uh, <laughs> I hope you appreciate this favor I'm doing in letting you out. As good of you, mate. No hard feelings, eh? Right. After all, I'm just doing my job. I reckon you'd be one of them dragons then. Yeah, named Spyro. Never thought I'd see one. You dragons used to rule this entire world, you know. Then all of a sudden you left. Poof. Dragons used to live here? Didn't you know? They say it was over a thousand years ago, I think. And they just left? Yeah, and the weird thing is, after they left, all the magic in the world just sort of went with them. I mean, they say this world used to have magic coming out the wazoo. Flying ships, singing forests, wishing stones, you name it. But when the dragons left, it all just dried up. Is that why some of the portals don't work? Yeah, they're starting to fade out too, one by one. Well, I gotta get back home and do some damage control. Come visit any time you like. Interesting times, interesting times. So yeah, we got some more more cutscenes about uh, you know the history and you know how how the, the dragons used to inhabit um, this area, this this land. Um, all right, there we go. Well, in the next part, we're going to go to a level where we can play as Sheila, but uh, not you know it's still a Spyro level. It is Sunny Villa. So thank you for watching and see you then. Goodbye.